Hello and welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. My name is Jenny and I work in the Reputation and Brand Management Department at Fanshawe College. I'll be your host for today's session. Today we're joined by Chris Monteith who will be speaking about the General Arts, Science Program and Pathways at Fanshawe College. Thanks for being here, Chris. Not a problem. Before, before we begin today's session, I would like to review a few housekeeping items. Audience cams and mics are turned off for this session, so no need to worry, no one can see or hear you at all. If you have any questions throughout the session, it's really easy to send them in by using the questions feature. To access the questions feature, just click on the question mark and type away. I will gather your submitted questions during the presentation to ask in our live Q&A. We'll try our best to get through all of your submitted questions within the session time. If you're looking for more information after the session, we'll provide you with contact information and how to book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. Lastly, if you happen to have multiple programs open and running, it may compromise your webinar experience. We recommend you take a moment now to close any open programs before we begin. Once again, I'd like to introduce Chris Monteith, who will be speaking about the General Arts and Science Program and Pathways at Fanshawe College. I'll be back again for the live Q&A, and now I'm going to pass it over to Chris. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. My name is Chris Monteith, and I'm just going to give you some information about the General Arts and Science Program and some of the um, uh, pathways that you can use the program for to move into. First off, I just want to introduce myself formally. Again, my name is Chris. I am the coordinator and a professor in the School of Language and Liberal Studies in the program of General Arts and Science. And Bev Antone Collar, as you can see pictured here, is the academic advisor for the program. If you were to join our program, you would get to know Bev and I very, very well. So I just wanted to include my email there so that if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to take a picture of this slide and email me anytime you'd like. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I went to Central High School in St. Thomas. And then in this area here where you see the arrow, I went to Trent University for about two years. I was enrolled in Trent, but I was still really young and I didn't attend a lot of classes. And after two years, I left the school and started working full time as a midnight baker at Tim Hortons. I quickly realized that was something I didn't want to do long term. So I came back to Fanshawe and I attended the General Arts and Science two year diploma program. Once I completed that, I went over to Western where I double majored in English and history. And then I completed my master's in history in 2008 and I was hired as a professor here at Fanshawe. In 2016, I began as the coordinator for the program, and I've been doing that ever since. So that's just a little bit about myself, and the reason I like to tell that story to students is just so they can see that no educational path is linear. There's always gonna be bumps in the road, and I completely understand that, and general arts and science was tremendously helpful in helping me get my academic career back on path so that I could do what I wanted to do. So a little bit about the program itself. Some of the key questions I tend to get from students are, why would I wanna come into the general arts and science program? And what job can I do after I graduate from the general arts and science program? And these are excellent questions. And I hope through my presentation today that I'm able to address some of these questions. So first off, what job can you get through the program? We are not necessarily a career program. And what I mean by that is, you don't come to general arts and science for a year or two years and then go and get a job as a professional philosopher or a historian or working in biology. We're a program that helps students obtain their net, the credentials they need to go into their next career programs. Okay? So we also help students transition into those career programs and get the necessary courses they need uh, or admission requirements. We also help a lot of students transition directly over to university. So if you're coming out of high school and you're not quite sure if you're ready for the rigors of university study, starting in the general arts and science program really helps you learn at the academic level what is expected of you, how to set your time management skills, and to really find out what you're passionate about and what you wanna to go to university and study for four, five years. The other thing we do is we help students really figure out what they're interested in. You're coming out of high school, and I know my son's in high school right now, and they keep asking him, what do you want to do for a career? And he keeps saying, I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet. And that's very similar to how I was when I came out of high school. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I know I had a passion for English, 
but I wasn't sure how that translated into a career. It wasn't until I came to Fanshawe and really got turned on by one random history course that I took. And that's what led me in that direction when I went to Western. So this is something that I'm really proud of that our program supplies students with, the ability to take a litany of different courses and find out what they're passionate about. We also offer a number of really flexible learning opportunities. So if you're somebody who has a family or has works full time and you don't have the ability to come to the campus physically, you can take the entire program online. We also offer the opportunity for you to do maybe one or two classes in the classroom and three online. So there's a lot of flexibility options there for students. Finally, we offer the opportunity for you to upgrade. When you're going through high school, you may not have achieved the grades in math or science or English that you were hoping to or that you need to get into those programs that you really want to move into. Come to us for one year and we can help you build those credentials up so that you meet the admission requirements for those programs moving forward. So typically um, what happens is students choose to do a year of post-secondary school. Um, and they do this for two reasons. The first one, to upgrade their courses, as I said, and the second one is really to figure out what they want to do, okay? And that's one of the bigger things I hear students say all the time. I sit down with them and I consult with them one-on-one -on -one and I say, what are you looking to do moving forward? And I say, you know what, Chris, I'm just not sure still. And that's what we really help with, okay? key thing to keep in the back of your mind if you're sitting there right now and you're thinking man I, i'm not sure this is a good direction for you to start again you can build up your post your post-secondary academic record so students often say to me I, you know i i don't know if i'm going to do a victory lap in high school or do another year of high school what can come into general arts and science do well a it helps you learn at a post-secondary level because it's very different than what you see in high school and b You've le you learn how to schedule your time and time manage to be successful. There's a big difference between a professor assigning something that's due on Sunday at midnight and you have to get that assignment in, where maybe in high school you you're given a little more flexibility. So learning those skills, learning that rigor is really key. Additionally, if you're thinking about university, this is a great place to kind of start. Okay? We offer a ton of elective course choice here. And I want, on a couple of next slides here, I'm gonna have a link at the bottom, I'll point it out to you. I would urge you to take a picture of it so that you can go onto this link after our session and take a look at some of the courses that we're offering for this upcoming winter semester. Okay? I'll point it out to you when we get to it. This is a, an example of one of our students this semester and what they're taking this year. So. As you can see, this student came to me and said, Chris, I'm just not sure what I want to do. So she enrolled in a Discovering Social Sciences class, an English class, a history class, and then a psychology class. So she really touched on a bunch of different ideas. And she figured, okay, one of these has got to spark my passion. And it was really interesting. It was business that really jumped out of her. And it was something that was mentioned in her abnormal psychology class something about going and learning workplace psycho uh, workplace psychology counseling in a workplace so she decided she wanted to transition into a business program after general arts and science so you can see in her second semester she really started honing it in she's taken an introduction to business class she also took a math course to help with the business and then she took some classes that she thought she'd be interested in but that might help moving forward with the american politics and the sociology of deviance. The key thing to understand here is in general arts and science, you need 10 courses to finish the one year certificate. The only mandatory courses required is the reason and writing course in your first semester and the business communications or professional communications course in your second semester. Otherwise, you're selecting elective courses based on what you're interested in or what you hope to go into. Okay. So this was a student who wasn't quite certain what she wanted to do. On the next slide, this is a student who's interested in going into nursing. Okay. So her grades in high school, she'd been out of school for about five years. 
So she wanted to upgrade her biology and chemistry and math so that she could gain admission into the nursing program. So you can, you can see she took her bio and it goes over two semesters. That gets the 12 U biology, similar to the chemistry and the math. And then these were her elective courses. So she took a psychology of addictions and then a video game theory course. Once again, you can see the writ and the communications are mandatory courses. Otherwise, she's picking courses that help her achieve those goals that she set for herself. We have a number of articulation agreements with other universities. Our key one is probably undoubtedly with Western, Kings, Huron, and Brescia. We send a lot of students to that school after they finish with the one year or two year diploma in general arts and science. When it comes to our science and math credentials, you can see the universities along the right hand side here. They accept our courses as 12U credentials and therefore accept our students into their programs, science and nursing programs. These are just a couple of the many courses that we offer our students. And this is just from one semester. As you can see, we typically offer 130 courses in the fall semester and then another 130 courses in the winter semester for students to pick from. And you would only be picking five from that list, okay? So here's the link I was telling you about. If you wanna take a quick picture of it, you can go online right now, <clears throat> excuse me, and take a look at all the courses that we're offering for this upcoming semester. But again, you can see it's all over. You could take any number of field of interest from the history of hip hop, if you're thinking about moving into music industrial arts, to psychology, to English, right? Or you could take my history of medicine course as well. <laughs> so I've left that up for a second. Hopefully everybody got a chance to take a picture of it, right? You have my email. I'm also more than happy to send it to you by email if you'd like. Okay. So again, the reason in writing course is teaching you how to write an effective post-secondary essay. For the communications course, this works on your written and verbal communication skills. Okay. You'll work on how to write a professional letter, professional email, research report, and do presentations. As you can see here, with the one-year certificate, students select eight elective courses with those two mandatory. If you were looking for the two-year diploma, you would select 18 elective courses and those two mandatory courses. These are some of the programs that we send a number of our students to. I'll show you a um, up-to-date version in a couple of seconds here. But again, these are a lot of the programs that we're sending students to, and we also send them to degree-level programs as well. There we go. In addition to that, we have a transfer agreement with Western where we offer seven university courses in our program. Now these are full year courses that run from September to April, and they count as two courses. We have courses in history of Western art, sociology, philosophy, English psychology, indigenous studies and gender studies. With the one year certificate, you're able to take two of these courses and transfer two of those courses directly over to Western, Kings, Huron or Brescia. If you do the two year diploma, you can take five of those courses and then go directly into your second year at Kings, Huron, Russia, or Western in the social sciences field. Okay. So this is a fantastic opportunity for students. If you're looking to transition over to Western and you want to do it a bit quicker, you could do two years with us and then your three years, your three-year undergrad over at Western, Huron, Kings, or Russia. We have similar agreements with Lakehead, Windsor, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions and I can go over in more in detail on those. So those are the university courses there. And again, like I said, these are year long courses. So if you are a student who is seriously considering university once you finish with college, these are a fantastic opportunity to try out what university level studies are about. Okay. We also offer courses from other programs at Fanshawe. And the goal for this is we are a pathway program. So I wanna be able to give you the opportunity to take courses in other programs so that you can find out if you're 
passionate about going into that direction. So as you can see, we offer courses in design foundations, pre-media, fine art. So while you're completing our certificate, you can be getting a head start in that program and finding out if it's something you're passionate about going into. It's a great way to move forward. Again, oftentimes the writ and the communication you take with us transfers over into those programs as well. These are some of the top programs we've sent our students to over the last three years. You can see it's heavy on the practical nursing, collaborative nursing. We've also sent students to free health, police foundations, and a number of other programs, including social work. Now, this is a longer list that we've got, but I just wanted to pull the top six to eight for you. So you got a feeling for how we send students around the camp, uh, the college. Right? In addition to that, we have one of the, we have the second highest graduation rate for, at Fanshawe College. As of fall 2021, we'll be implementing a new Silex element into our courses. This is a signature innovative learning experience for students. You can see the image down at the bottom. These are students that attended Western to look at cadavers for our anatomy class. And this is what I mean when I say a signature student opportunity. We have a Black Lives Matter course where students go and they check out the Underground Railroad locations here in London. So these are just great opportunities to get out into the community and try something different than sitting just in the classroom. One of the key things that we pride ourselves on, Bev and I, our 24 hour response time to the students when they reach out to us. We're also dedicated to trying to help build that culture with our students. With so many courses, oftentimes you'll take five courses and you may not see the same student in the class with you uh, across more than one class. So we wanna build that culture up for you guys so you have the opportunity to connect with each other. We do this through offering a number of academic workshops. We also offer a number of community and volunteer opportunities. These are not mandatory. They're just opportunities for you to engage with other students and in the community more. We also do two touching base or checking in sessions every semester where we gather students who are interested in attending and just talk to them about how the semester is going and troubleshoot any issues they might have. If you're interested in learning more about the program, you're more than welcome to join our Facebook page, our Instagram page. And through those social media sites, you can get a vibe for what our students are sharing back and forth, the learning groups that they form together to help work through the problems that they're having in classes or to be successful in those classes. You can also see when we post dates for workshops or events, we had representatives from universities come and visit last week. So we promoted these through our Facebook and social media pages. So again, you're welcome to sign up for any of these at any point in time. Just, request, just go online through one of these sites. Feel free to take a picture here and send it to me or send me the email if you'd like. And I'd be happy to have you join those um, social media sites. Additionally, we are doing the uh, community engagement. Again, this is just a volunteer opportunity. Last year, we went to the Ronald McDonald House. We visited a food bank. We had planned on doing some tree planting this fall, although that didn't happen for us, unfortunately. We are also planning on going and working in a soup kitchen this summer. Um, again, unfortunately, the current situation prevented us from doing that. We're hoping to return to these uh, initiatives come fall 2021. Right? We also helped out with the public library a little bit. And these aren't mandatory. They're just great chances to connect with other students, connect with faculty, and just give back to the community a little bit. Again, we worked with uh, center, uh, centered.ca and the London Arts Council. We had a couple of students do uh, research projects with those organizations and their works were published. So again, we're constantly trying to present students with these opportunities, jobs and volunteer opportunities that they can get engaged in, build up your CVs, build up your engagement and help you moving forward. Okay. We also have a number of exchange opportunities. We've set something up with a school in Ireland where you could do two year diploma with us, have a minimum of 60 overall average, and then move into some degree programs over in Ireland in politics, English, psychology, or sociology. We also have opportunities for students to study abroad with the Netherlands, Belgium, Brazil. 
we had a student set up to go this year again situations um, prevented us prevented her from going this year but moving forward these are fantastic opportunities if you're looking to travel more okay. excellent finally i just want to show you that uh, we were one of the more popular programs in mclean's magazine so i hope to see you soon i think i ran over sorry about that if you have any questions there's my email please don't hesitate to email me sorry thank you we're good um, thank you, Chris. That was a wonderful overview that's led to some excellent questions for this Q&A portion. Just a reminder for the attendees, if you'd like to ask a question, please submit it with the questions feature and to open the questions feature, just click on the question mark. If you have any questions after the session, we recommend you email myfuture@fanshawec.ca or book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. Let's go to our first question. Can you do this program over a period of three years or is it required to be done in one or two? You're most definitely welcome to do this program over three years. If you're thinking about, are you thinking about the one year or the two year, you can space it out. Um, if you're, for us, part-time is three courses or less, full-time is three courses or more. So if you decided you wanted to do a part-time over an extended period of time, that is not a problem at all. Perfect. Next question. Do I have to complete the two-year diploma to transfer to university or can I transfer with a one-year certificate in general arts and science? You can transfer with a one-year certificate in general arts and science. Wonderful. With so many courses being offered, is there someone to help with course registration and to make suggestions for the best courses for my pathway? Most definitely. Bev and I try to sit down with every student, either through, in this time, through Zoom or over the phone. Um, when we're back on campus, we try to sit down with every student in our program and walk them through the best courses for them, talk about their academic plans, and help register for students for the following semester. If you're starting in say January this year, um, December 8th is when course registration starts and just reach out to Bev or I and we'd happily help you guys with registration. That's great. Are students eligible for OSAP funding if they're enrolled in the general arts and science program? It's a common question. We are a pathway program, but we are OSAP funded. So you're most definitely able to get OSAP by coming into the general arts and science program. It's a good question. I get that one a lot. How many courses do students have to take to complete the certificate and the diploma? Good. So for the certificate, you need 10 courses, eight electives and the writ and the communications. And for the diploma, you need 20 courses the writ, the communications, and then 18 electives. That's great, thank you. Yeah. How can the general arts and science program help prepare me for further study at the college or university level? Perfect, that's a great question. And again, as I was saying in my presentation, I mean, we try to teach you how to learn at a post-secondary level. It's very different than high school. So to get that experience under your belt in the general arts and science program before you move off to your career program or off to university, just gets you so much further ahead than most students coming right out of high school. I'm constantly talking to Western or King's reps. We talk about how strong the general arts and science students are that come into their program. So we really help set you up for success long-term. That's fantastic, thank you. With so many courses to take, how difficult is it to connect with other students in the program? It can be a challenge, and that's one of the reasons why we've set up a number of these sort of workshops and volunteer opportunities and just chances for you to connect with other students. That's one of the reasons why so many of our students use our social media to create learning groups or just, you know, connect with one another. So it can be a challenge, I'm not going to lie to you. But I think if you take advantage of some of the opportunities we present you with, then you do have the, that chance to really connect and make some great friendships. That's great. Do I have to take a math or science course in the general arts and science program? The name of the program is deceiving for sure. Uh, it implies that you have to take an art class and a science course. No, you do not have to take a science or a math class. The only mandatory courses are the reason and writing course and the communications course. It'd be great to change the name, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So. <laughs> Perfect. What are some of the other Silex opportunities that students would engage in in general arts and science? Excellent. I talked about the one with the anatomy and I talked about the uh, Black Lives Matter um, course. 
I teach a course called the Global Drug Trade, where we intend on going and visiting the London Police Station. So um, I know that last year there was a history course on ancient Rome that traveled to Italy and to Greece. So these are just some of the opportunities that we have, uh, we'll have available. Our professors are still working through some of the um, silics that they want to incorporate. So we should have more in the new year for to share with you guys. That's perfect. Was there anything else that you wanted to share, Chris? I don't think so. I think I touched on everything. I hope I didn't go too fast for anybody. My email is right there at the bottom. If anybody has any question, of course, email where Jenny told you to, but uh, please feel free to email me as well. Absolutely. Um, so it looks like then we've reached the end of our session today. I'd like to thank Chris for his time. We would also like to thank all who attended and submitted questions today. We hope that all of your questions were answered in regards to the general arts and science program and pathways. If you, if you can think of any more questions Fanshawe related, please connect with our Fanshawe College recruitment team by email at myfutureatfanshawec.ca or by booking a one-on-one -on -one appointment with them at fanshawec.ca slash connect. If you have questions specific to this program, please connect with Chris. Um, don't forget to watch your email as we'll be sending you some details about our open house activity this Saturday and enjoy the rest of open house. Thank you. Thanks everybody.